Hello everyone, back to today's third video. So we're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, same day. So today's third video, which takes us to around the 9th of uh, March, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensemble. So we're going to around a couple of weeks, and we'll have a look at the uh, charts from CFS V2 for the whole of March uh, at the end of the video. Uh, so, it's been a busy day at Gasworthy so far today. We started off with the uh, second and final season model route of the spring of 2020, getting 13 long-range models together and see what they're all showing for the spring. Weekend forecast has been released as well. And uh, tonight, we're going to have Terry Scully's, uh spring forecast for you. Lots of updates coming up tomorrow as well. I'll talk about those at the end of the video. If I do anything else, I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's taken part in the uh, poll on the Gals Love YouTube channel. So uh, we uh, started this a couple of days ago. And we're just asking you what uh, you think this spring uh, will be like in terms of the weather. So clearly, uh, I think spring will be cold and wet has won uh, this with 39% of people, uh, gas well its viewers, uh, thinking that this spring will be cold and wet. Other options were uh, spring to be warm and dry, 18% for that. Spring to be warm and wet, 22% for that. Spring to be cold and dry, 10% for that. And uh, spring to have average temperatures of rainfall, 11% uh, for that. There are other possible ramifications that uh, we could have been crude, but you can only have five options within YouTube's um, uh, polls. So anyway, it looks like spring to be cold or wet has won. That's a consensus of uh, Gaz Webby's viewers, but you'll find out tomorrow when we release the Gaz spring 2020 forecast, what we're thinking is going to happen with this spring. It'll be interesting to see how that compares to uh, Gaz Webby's viewers. Keep an eye on the community tab uh, at the Gaz Lovers YouTube channel, there will be further written posts and um, also uh, polls and different things that you can get involved with coming up over the next few days, weeks and months. So do keep an eye on that community tab within the uh, Gaz Lovers YouTube channel. 357 uh, of, our view of our viewers voted in this, so big thank you to all of you for getting involved and um, for voting. And yeah, you'll find out tomorrow what Gaz Lovers is forecasting for spring 2020. Right, moving on to the flood warnings, uh, Ben. So, uh, of course, we had quite a lot of heavy rain yesterday and today. So far, there are still no severe flood warnings. So we still have zero severe flood warnings, which means there's a danger to life. Whether that will... Uh, start going up again um, late today, tomorrow and into Monday as all of the rain that we've had associated uh, with um, this storm starts to feed down through the river systems. We'll find out in a day or two's time. But so far, zero severe flood warnings. But we have got 86 flood warnings, which is flooding expected, immediate action required, and 216 flood alerts. <coughs> Excuse me, 18 flood warnings are no longer in force have been removed in the last 24 hours. So at the moment, we can see continue to see the slight improvement that occurred at the back end of this week. Um, whether that carries on through the next two or three days, we'll have to wait and see. I think next week, though, and we talk about this in Weekend Forecast, I think next week we'll have uh, a lot less in the way of flooding rains. It will still be quite an unsettled week. There will be showers coming and going, there'll be winchiness at times, but I think next week promises to be not dry, but I think we'll lose the sort of very uh, sort of intense rain that we've had recently. So hopefully things are, uh, are, are soon going to be, we're soon going to be over the worst, let's say. Not getting particularly better, maybe for a while, uh, but hopefully we're over the worst with this um, flooding for the time being. We shall see, of course, whether things start to deteriorate again, though, after the weather that we have had, wet weather that we've had sort of yesterday and overnight and into this morning. We'll soon find out. Now, so the CET is currently looking uh, for February provisional up to the 28th of uh, uh, February. Yesterday, we stand at 6.5, which is an anomaly of 2.7 degrees above average. Uh, I wouldn't expect that to change much now before um, the end of the month, because we've only got one more day today to go. Uh, it may get down, corrected downwards a little bit, but I don't think it'll be a big downwards correction this year. So I think in the end, we'll probably finish up somewhere around 
around 6.3 or possibly uh, 6.5. Somewhere between there, 6.3 to 6.5. Um, may even finish at 6.4, which is where we was in January. Of course, might have the, an identical CT for February to uh, January. Both a pair of exceptionally mild months perhaps we'll find out tomorrow or monday hopefully uh where uh, what the february centering temperature uh is going to come in at these are the 500 millibar high normally flow charts the next week 10 days from the Penn state university we've got the ecmwf on the top of the gfs which having at the moment is on the bottom 500 millibars is an area in the absolute high pressure and low pressure i've been moved around by the jet stream running above blue extrapolates to low pressure and yellow orange and red extrapolate to high pressure you can see that uh, in the week 10 day time frame which takes us just about to the second week of march now still quite unsettled really with the ecm still below average heights up to our north not as unsettled as it has been but we're still in a westerly flow we've still got low pressure more or less in control there is this ridge down to the south and to the southwest we're hoping that this ridge is going to start building northwards as we go further on into march but certainly for the first week or so of march things do look unsettled this is how the gfs is uh, looking in comparison again we've got the below average heights up to our north but just a little bit more towards the northeast maybe with the above average heights out to the west and the southwest and so that leaves us doing something like that the flow with the jet still looks a bit unsettled but this area of high pressure down across spain is getting closer to us and uh, so out of the two the gfs looks like it's the one that uh, heralds the chance anyway of something drier and maybe a little bit more spring-like as we move into the second week of march these were GFS upper temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. The red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Manchester. So it's going to be around or a little bit below average through the next few days, uh, going through the first week of March. Into the second week of March, in the middle of the month, signs of a bit of a pickup in the temperature. There are some very mild uh, ensemble members. These ones up here, including today's GFS 6 o'clock operational run, that thick green line just there producing proper spring light weather but of course we've got these ensemble members down here that look a bit colder overall though i think they are trending milder as we go through the second week of march and probably trending drier too so plenty of precipitation spikes coming up through the first week of march and the second week of march possibly sees a little bit of a drying trend Temperature anomalies from the 29th of February to the 8th of March. Overall below average, going to be another pretty chilly, if not quite cold, week coming up. Precipitation anomalies from the 29th of February to the 8th of March. A bit wet and average in the north, but going a little bit drier than average through central parts. I mean, we may start to see these precipitation anomalies trending drier in the next few days. That's how the GFS looks for Tuesday. So on Tuesday, we're in a rather cold and showery northwesterly wind. And we keep these unsettled conditions going into next weekend. In fact, next weekend might turn even more unsettled. We may bring another pretty deep area of low pressure in from off the Atlantic. Not sure it would be a named storm. But it does look as though next weekend could again be quite wet and windy. As that gets out of the way, we pull down quite a cold north to northwesterly wind as well. But then high pressure starts to build up from the south as we get to day 10, which is actually the 10th of March. High pressure starting to build up from the south, begin to push the jet stream northwards. And this GFS run does then start to build a nice area of high pressure almost over the top of the country as we get just beyond day 10. This is Wednesday, the 11th of March. A nice ridge there at 1,035 millibars, bringing lots of dry weather. And these dry conditions may carry on into the extended range. Lots of high pressure dominating. Does start to try and turn a little bit more unsettled for the north again late on. This gets to the middle of March, as far as we can go, to the 16th of March. We try and turn a bit more unsettled in the north then. But in the south, still quite um, anti-cyclonic. And the main thing is that it is drying out very, very significantly there through the second week of march and up to middle of the month and also turning uh really quite mild as well so taste of spring and uh, certainly drying out a lot as we move up to the middle part of the month
GM looks like that. Again, very uh, showery and quite cold on Tuesday into next week. Now, there's uncertainty with this area of low pressure just here. The uh, GFS has this low pressure going down into Biscay and France through Wednesday and Thursday. Not really impact us, but the GM has had a lot further northwards. And so through the second half of next week, the GM gives us a very unsettled spell of weather through Thursday and still lasting into uh, Friday. So question marks about that, that area of low pressure. In the weekend forecast, we went with the idea that the low will impact France, but it could be further north. We'll have to wait and see. And then another low is coming in uh, on Saturday. So the GM is very unsettled, actually, through the first week of March. This is bringing another bout of heavy rain and maybe gale force winds on Saturday, the 7th of March, in a week's time. And up to day 10, the GM keeps things pretty unsettled. Not much sign of a ridge of high pressure up to day 10. So, have to keep that at the back of our minds. So, this idea of high pressure building up through the second week of March is not supported yet across all models. So, it's certainly not a done deal at the moment. Uh, ECM looks like that, so again, rather cool and showery for Tuesday. And um, as we go through into Wednesday and Thursday, again, quite a bit of uncertainty about this second half of the week period. No uh, particularly deep area of low pressure there in the second half of next week. Just continues rather showery, probably up in the north and west in particular. Next weekend looks a bit wet and windy, though. This is Sunday the 8th of March, and uh, low pressure rain is properly coming in off the Atlantic. Um, and as we move up towards day 10, that's how we look. Uh, actually quite unsettled with the ECM at day 10. A long fetch southwesterly there, so it would be very mild, um, but still quite unsettled. And this ridge that's trying to build to our south, uh, you know, not really pushing northwards yet. So at the moment, it certainly isn't a guarantee that we're going to settle down through the second week of uh, March. Hopefully we will, but it's not guaranteed to happen at the moment. Uh, this is how the ECM is looking in terms of the precipitation type forecast from Tameteo.com. So we've got the rain clearing away today associated, of course, with uh, today's storm. And then we've got the winter showers up in the north as uh, we go through into uh, the early part of next week. We could bring some rain in the south. Uh, and that, that might turn a little bit winter over high ground as well early on Monday morning. Then we're into a sunshine and winter showers type scenario through Monday and into Tuesday. Things go a little bit dry around the middle part of next week. Showers mostly restricted to coastal areas. Then in the second half of next week, it turns to, starts to turn more unsettled again with further rain coming in from off the Atlantic at times. So rain coming and going there as we move up towards day 10. That's how long as we get to day 10. Wet weather, particularly in the north at that point. These are the options are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 9th of March. Have 13 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure in from off the Atlantic and a flat westerly wind too. So they're still unsettled up to day 10. Nine, though, have us under high pressure as early as day 10. Nine members of the ECM ensembles have this ridge through the country building to northeast. Could be a bit of a chilly east or northeasty wind with that, but at least it's a drier option. Uh, another nine with a ridge out to the southwest, low pressure to our east and to our northwest. That one looks like it's trying to start to turn us drier as well. Another nine, though, very unsettled, still with a trough of low pressure elongating through the UK, Western Europe. Six with low pressure out to the west, bringing up that long fetch southwest. That includes the operational run, that's the run we've just been discussing. And five with low pressure out to the west, high pressure blocking up to the north. Uh, jet streams on the northwest southeast alignment, and that's trying to turn things colder from an easterly direction. So a lot of options on the table. Probably the ESM ensemble still favouring mainly unsettled conditions, though, for day 10. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This is the 15th of uh, March. So we have 14 members of the ECM ensembles then with high pressure over and to the south and east country. Low pressure is up to the north. We're bringing like a flat west southwesterly wind. So with that one... Probably a lot of dry weather and pretty mild. 13 with high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north. That's probably quite a mild option as well. And um, certainly for the south, settling down a little bit. Uh, 8 just here with low pressure. A little bit more influential there. Probably still quite unsettled with that option. Uh, 
Seven with low pressure down to our south. High pressure centered at Joba, Scandinavia. Uh, so that's trying to bring in an easterly wind there for the middle of, uh, of March. Uh, another seven with high pressure to the north of Scotland. That's setting things down. Yes, could be a little bit chilly though from the east. And then two uh, that have a mid-Atlantic ridge and they're taking up towards Greenland. So they're trying to pull down cold north to northeasterly winds. Lots of options for the middle of March. But overall, again, still seeing that shift towards higher pressure for the middle of the month. So, uh, yes, ECM is a little bit slower than the GFS in getting us into anticyclonic weather. But it looks like from the ECM ensemble, it does eventually get better. And by the middle of March, we should be into much more anticyclonic conditions the question will be where the high pressure sits, and that will determine whether it's a spring-like uh, feel or whether it's a rather wintry feel. Finally, the CFSV2, these are 500 millibar heights, breaking down into weak beers. The first weekly beer takes from the 29th of February to the 6th of March. The coming week has below average heights out to the northwest, and we're bringing in an unsettled and disturbed west to northwesterly flow, so that looks very unsettled indeed. Week 2 is the 7th to the 13th of March, uh, below average heights to the north. Above average heights starting to build to the south. The jet stream is beginning to get pushed northwards, turning increasingly dry there through that second week of March, and probably quite spring-like temperatures as well. Week 3 is the 14th to the 20th of March, pulling heights out into the middle of the Atlantic. Also, there, uh, we've got some high pressure to our south, low pressure up to the northwest. That could be trying to turn things more unsettled and cooler again, actually, for the third week of March. And then we finish up in week 4, which is the 21st, 27th of March, building up above average heights from the south and also to the east. Low pressure is getting pushed up to the north. Jet stream is getting pushed northwards as well. That, again, increasingly towards higher pressure and spring-like conditions. So the hints are definitely still there for higher pressure for March. Um, but to how quickly we go into that spell of high pressure remains to be seen. Of course, how long it lasts remains to be seen as well. We can see that the GFS is actually trying to get us into high pressure quite quickly, as early as like days um, 8, 9, 10, moving towards higher pressure. The ECM looks a lot, lot more delayed on that, uh, as does the GM. Hopefully by starting into the second week of, uh, of March up to the middle of the month, hopefully by then we will be in some higher pressure. But it's not going to be immediate. And the first week of March definitely looks very unsettled. And that may extend out to like the first 10 days of March as well. So it remains to be seen how quickly this high pressure gets going. And once it, if it does ever get established, it remains to be seen how long it lasts. The CFS is still quite keen on relatively anti-cyclonic weather for March drying us out. So uh, with a bit of luck, that's the way we're going to go. Right, we've got Tony's Gold is spring at forecast tonight at Gazwevis. Tomorrow we'll start with the Gazwevis spring 2020 forecast. We will also have uh, Gazwevis sunny round up for you as well. Got a little sneak peek for summer because as we release the uh, spring forecast, so the long range bandwagon will roll on and we'll move on to summer updates then so a little sneak peek of uh, uh of the summer updates tomorrow afternoon after the spring forecast i think we're gonna do ensembles watch as well that could be the last ensembles watch of the uh, of this winter and uh terry scott's march forecast will be released tomorrow also so it's gonna be a very very busy day at gas so do keep checking back to the website and also to the youtube channel if you've enjoyed this video then please give us a like on the video give us a thumbs up let us know in the comments whether you enjoyed it and what you think and uh, also of course don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel and then you'll be notified uh when we release the content that you want to see that's all for now though and thanks for watching